Yes. So, welcome everybody to um, the first live session of our management and leadership class. I try again to, um, to share the presentation. If there are any questions, you are happy to, um, to interrupt me or to, uh, to use the chat function, then I'm, well, then I'm, well, seeing, well, I'm seeing that. Yeah. And um, yeah, it's running. Um, and let's, uh, let's get started. So welcome to management leadership course um, in the summer semester. Down. And first of all, I would like to share my um, uh, details here with you. Um, I also try to communicate that uh, via Facebook already. And um, so you can see here the um, the virtual university for the technical university of uh, Lübeck students. You can see here um, the internet address and um, here you have the, the key code um, to the lecture. So please subscribe um, to uh, the lecture, so enroll in order um, to enable me to contact you uh, in, a, in an easy and, uh, and smooth way. Okay. Um, a little bit about myself. Um, my name is Mark Rechnick. I'm a professor of business administration, in particular marketing and management at the Technical University of Lübeck. In addition to that, I'm a visiting professor to international universities such as East China University of Science and Technology in Shanghai or a European uh, Business School um, a Regents University in London. Apart from that, I'm also a director um, at the Center for Marketing Management and Gunnan Management Institute in Switzerland, and also a visiting professor to um, Cambridge University. I'm the Chief Research Officer at uh, Kotler Impact Incorporated. It's a company it's founded by my friend and mentor, yeah. Professor Philip Kotler, uh -huh. who is the most distinguished uh, marketing professor on the planet. And I've been uh, professionally, I've been uh, working for Shell International um, for uh, about 10 years in my, uh, in my life, the last three years in London, solely in marketing and strategy positions. Uh, I run my own company, Presnick Management Consulting, and as such, we are working with a lot of um, multinational enterprises and corporations in the area of coachings when it comes to negotiation strategy. But also, I do a lot of um, international and global keynotes, as some of you uh, know. I've written a couple of books, um, basically um, books on marketing and books are uh, about strategy <laughs> and books about negotiation. <laughs> okay, so um, this is again the um, the YouTube channel. Uh, I like to... Uh, <laughs> okay, there it's towards. Here you have the uh, QR code um, of the YouTube channel and here's the internet address. So if you access the YouTube channel, I try to upload, um, if technically, if this works, um, my YouTube sessions here, my live sessions uh, with you to the server, so you and your colleagues may easily access it. Um, what would be um, an interesting thing, and originally I wanted to do that um, in the uh, in the normal um, teaching in uh, normal class. Um, however, it uh, it also works like that. Um, it would be cool if you could register for free at thequiz.com. So it's a, it's a, a quizzes.com. Here's a, there's a typing error. So, sorry about that. But here's the QR link. You can register for free, and then um, we can do. Um, and I, I also can assign that little quizzes and um, little checks, self checks about um, things we are discussing in class. And uh, originally, I also had a plan to. Um, give some prices away. So we had some pencils and uh, it says, uh, I don't know, marketing champion or leadership champion. And so little pencils and uh, for the uh, for the number one people um, who are best in, in, in the participation of these kind of quizzes. But we'll work around, we'll get it done somehow. Um, these are my social media profiles. If you, um, you're happy um, to connect with me via social media, whether well, that's LinkedIn or Facebook, Twitter or Instagram. 
um, you may do so because it's sometimes it's more easy to communicate uh, with a lot of people simultaneously using the social media channels. That's uh, a, a little bit uh, or it's a little bit more easy than to do so sometimes uh, via the university server. Okay, um, for the students um, in Germany, so in my um, Technical University of Lübeck class, um, your assignment um, is to do a SWOT analysis. Um, you have to uh, form a group and do a SWOT analysis to grab together. So not one group, it depends on the um, amount of participants. So um, there are, um, there can be five to six people in one group and you need to set up a group of, uh, of people and then you can select uh, one company you want to look at for example adidas or google or amazon and um, this needs to be approved by me and uh, then you need to elaborate you need to work on a swot analysis um, of this uh, chosen company of this chosen corporation and this is what you need to send in um, via uh, via email. So it should be approximately ten pages long. Could be also fifteen pages. So, um, but no no shorter than ten pages. And um, the second task uh, and the second assignment will be that you have to do an in depth case study analysis. So I will upload um, a case study, and um, you have to work with your group members and answer the appropriate questions in a very differentiated way. So it's also a little bit uh, of a paper um, and it's the same. So it should be 10 pages up to 15 pages. And the papers need to be sent as electronic version as PDF or Word or PowerPoint, whatever to my uh, to my address. That's that's a little mistake here again. Mark dot Oliver dot Opresnik at and then it's TH, not the F, needs to be uh, going away. So we need to go get away with the F. Now it works. <laughs> so um, as a hard copy. Um, I see if there are, I don't know if I'm getting any kind of questions here. Nobody's having any kind of questions. No, that, that's fine. Um, what are the formal aspects of the assignment? Um, due date uh, we can discuss about that nobody knows what is going to happen in the future so usually the due date is one week prior to the uh, to the examination week this is what we uh, what we usually have and uh, here are some some um, instructions as to which kind of fonts to use etc this is all also uploaded you find all that you find online in the um, in the Moodle system so if you register for the course with the key code I was giving to you I'm referring to it one more time here. If you register on this kind of page with this kind of key code, um, you um, get you have all the information in addition to that. So, and um, as the examination is being valued as contributions of individual team members, it would be good to indicate who has written which part. So, if you hand in your uh, your paper. So not the SWOT analysis, but the second one, it would be good to uh, indicate who is written which kind of part. But of course, it is also OK if you say that um, every part of the paper has been written by all of you simultaneously. That's fine. So you, but then, of course, you get all the same kind of grade. OK. We also have an online script um, available um, online which you may use to study um, some stuff uh, online. So here are the different, uh, here's the, uh, the overview. So learning of uh, object one principles and task of leadership. And you can see which kind of chapters to look at. Decision analysis, management of motivation, creativity. You don't um, necessarily have to read all that, but that is just a suggestion what you can do if you have some time and don't attend physical lectures at the university. Um, here is additional uh, literature, but there is no need to read um, any books in addition to the uh, to the lecture. And um, I will communicate via my Facebook page and also via the university course um, when we are going to have the next meeting.
So, and here's the contents. Here's how the lecture looks like. What is the the um, the outlook and the overview? Um, so first. I'm going to talk a little bit about introduction to management and organization. So what is management all about? What is an organiza organization? How was management done yesterday? How is it done today? Um, then we discuss a little bit about organizational culture and um, then globalization, management in the global environment. And then in the fifth uh, section, we are discussing social responsibility and managerial ethics. Um, which is very important topic in today's world, uh, of course. Um, and you're all aware that we have a more this uh, CSR, so corporate social responsibility um, kind of uh, topics. Decision making, usually I'm leaving that out because um, that is usually done in other classes. So in um, business, general business administration classes, the same applies to foundations of planning and planning tools and techniques. Just for the sake of completeness, I have it in, but, and, and if there are some additional time, we may discuss that, but um, usually I'm, I'm not discussing that in depth. Um, the same applies for uh, organizational structure and design. Then we are talking a little bit about communication. That is a very broad topic. And I also run another uh, course this semester on successful negotiation and leadership. Human resource management, it is another topic we are uh, going to discuss that. Then very important, uh, managing change and innovation. That is a very, very important topic um, for every kind of organization, for every kind of manager and enterprise. Foundations of behavior. Uh, usually we are not um, discussing that so much because that is um, in, the, in the HR. And that is uh, also what is discussed in other classes as well. So this is what I usually leave out just for the sake of completeness. I have it in motivating employees. Then, of course, leadership. Of course, that is the lecture is called management and leadership. We are discussing leadership and uh, foundations of control. We leave that out usually and supply chain management. And then we discuss a little bit about marketing management. So it is a very, very um, uh, rich subject, so to say, because management and leadership what is management about management is about everything because we have marketing management we have financial management we have human resource management um so all this is management um so there are many many um things here in management which are applicable and which are very important um do you there's a question do you coordinate uh your online lectures with the other profs since we are already off schedule um yes of course uh partially i try to do this to do this but um not, not always is it possible to not have an overlap um so i try to do that i try to do that probably best would be um salem if it is if it is good uh, if you're okay with that if we have the lectures, um, or the live sessions now, um, the same schedule as we originally planned for the physical uh, lectures at the universities. So that could be, um, for example, a good suggestion. If you're okay with that, I can try to do that. Okay. Um, okay, so let's start. So at least um, the, the whole technical thing here is working. Let's start with the first chapter and um, the technical people at the university that told me, ah, originally, Professor, you planned one and a half hours for the video for the live session. Please make it a little bit shorter, a bit more compact, because otherwise the video is too, uh, too big and we are having problems in uploading it to the course. So um, probably uh, we also have to work a little bit around the length of the uh, of the live, live sessions. But let's get started now, finally. So. Introduction to management and organizations. What are what is management about? What are characteristics of manager? What is a manager basically? A manager is somebody who works with and through other people in order to achieve companies' objectives. So it is about the coordination of uh, work activities of um, non-managerial employees in order to get things done, in order to accomplish a certain kind of goal or objective. 
Um, of course, the changing nature of um, organizations and work in general has blurred away the clear lines and distinction between managers and non-manager employees. What does it mean? Basically, everybody uh, in today's world, even if he or she is not supervising people, is um, on an abstract level a manager. So there is no not a clear line. It's a thin red line between managers and non-manager employees. So everybody needs to manage somehow himself and also his or her work activities. So, but we'll memorize that management is the process of coordinating the work activities in such a way that they are completed efficiently and effectively with and through the people you manage. There are different kinds of uh, managers in the organization. There is a question, okay, I, I, I quickly see that here in the chat function. Um, can you please turn off your microphone? Um, okay, uh, there was one who having a microphone on. Okay, and there is another question here. I wanted to say that I first used the direct link that you provided in your last email. Yeah. Yeah, okay, that is, I'm sorry about that, Martin. I'm reading your, I'm reading your uh, chat. Um, yeah, I was opening, actually, I was opening the other mail, um, the other meeting also simultaneously, but there was nobody in. So everybody was in my private room, which I originally communicated. Now, I'm sorry for the confusion. Um, and later, um, after my first emails, I set up separate um, links for, um, for separate, Kind of lectures and uh, originally you were supposed to use this one but as everybody was using here my personal room i was referring to the personal room so therefore um uh, i was i was doing the meeting now in my personal room here but it works and in the future i try to do that as well um so but i'm i'm, I'm super excited that uh, at least it is it is somehow working and I can see that everybody uh, that somebody is chatting. I can can uh, click it, click on that here. That's fantastic. So, um, so we have top managers, middle managers, first middle managers, and non-manager employees. Basically, the ones who are not having any kind of people they are supervising. And uh, let's look at the different kind of uh, management types here. So, I'm sorry, I was too quick now. So um, the first things is top managers or top management people. Top management people, they are responsible for making organization-wide decisions and establishing the plans and goals that affect the entire organization. So they are basically responsible for setting up new kind of businesses um, to um, think about new kind of um, divisions that a company might step into. Um, so if a company is, for example, trying to diversify its business, um, it is happening also at the top management level. So um, to give an example, uh, that is the decision, for example, of uh, Amazon to step into um, competition with Netflix and also to do uh, video streaming. So that is a new kind of business, uh, business field. So um, that, these, are uh, these are decisions that are done at the top of the organization. Top managers are doing these. In the middle of uh, the pyramid, we have the so-called middle management or the middle managers, all the managers between the first line level and the top level of the organization. And usually those people, they are managing the first line managers. So these are heads of um, certain kind of divisions. For example, the chief marketing officer who's heading the marketing department, right? Um, or the chief financial officer who's heading the finance people. And then we have the first line managers. And these are the people who are, um, who are, the, uh, who are the first level when it comes to supervising people. They manage the work of non-manager in individuals and non-manager individuals, this means um, that these are people who are not supervising um, any other people. So who cannot tell any other people what to do or, or cannot 
coordinate their work activity because they're on the same kind of level. They're all on the same kind of level. And they are managed by their first line managers. This is also sometimes those managers are called line managers or uh, are group leaders, right? And um, so the first line managers, they manage the work of these non manager individuals who are directly involved with the production or creation of the organization's products or services as well. We talked about a little bit about that beforehand. Um, we said um, management is about um, the coordination of uh, work and activities of employees in order to achieve companies' objectives in an efficient and effective way. And here's the differentiation between uh, efficiency and effectiveness. Efficiency means getting the most output from the least amount of input. So this is more concerned with means, doing things in an, in an appropriate, in the right way that is efficient. Effectiveness means completing activities so that organizational objectives are attained so that that your actions do have an effect right so this is concerned with ends so that is the different the difference um so actions may have an effect but they may not be efficient at the same time but of course um, we also need to pay attention um, to do things in an efficient way. So to use people and resources we have, also IT, of course, in, um, in, a, in a way that is um, maximizing the output of the organization. And that is precisely why I'm sitting here in front of the monitor and trying to, to do some lectures. We are not obliged to do that. We are not forced to do that by the university um, due to Corona. However, uh, um, I was uh, very, very quickly uh, trying to set up a workaround method, and that's why why we are here together. And at least it seems to work finally. Um, so we talked about that quickly before. Efficiency means resource use, usage is put into into focus. So this is about really um, the input output relationship. And effectiveness is about the goal attainment. And management, of course, strives for low resource waste, so a high efficiency, and of course, a high effectiveness. If there are questions, I'm always happy to answer that. Um, every once in a while, I'm looking at the chat functions. Of course, the problem is a little bit that, um, that we don't have so much interaction, unfortunately, uh, as we would have in a physical class. Um, oh, there's one question coming up from, uh, from one person. Uh, Salem is asking, I wanted to ask if there is, uh, the ten, there is attendance points. I'm watching here the video with my colleague Salem. <laughs> uh, attendance, uh, you mean, um, for digital <laughs> attendance, uh, for watching the video live. Um, actually there is, there is no attendance points in my class. Um, also if you attend if we would have the lecture at the university, there are not attendance points um, during the class, unfortunately. So it's voluntarily, and if it's, if it's working around for you, the dates we, we, we set up for the, for the meetings, it's working, that's fine. If it's not working, um, try to, to look a couple of days later um, on my YouTube channel. Um, and uh, hopefully if everything works, I uploaded the video. I hope this answered uh, your question. And uh, let's look at the different kind of approaches to management in the past. Um, so what did researchers um, elaborate on that? First, we have um, a so-called functional approach to management. And this functional approach um, to management was invented uh, first by Henry Fayol, a scientist. And he said, management is about PULC. It's the POLC approach, P-O-L-C, which stands for planning, organizing, leading, and controlling. So um, basically, um, so these are all functions, of course, in the organization. Therefore, this is called functional approach to management. 
So um, he said, of course, a manager needs to plan. He needs to set goals um, and objectives for the organization and the management to be accomplished, right? And because if you set goals also, you are coordinating activities already because the people strive towards um, goal attainment and achievement. So that is also some kind of a management because it is a coordination function. Organizing is determining what needs to be done, how it will be done, and who is to do it that, to do that. So to get the right people on the right job and assign appropriate tasks to them. Leading that is a, a very, very important um, aspect, of course, of management and uh, of course is called management and leadership. Um, that is about motivating, leading and every other activity involved in dealing with the people. So also the communication, the communication aspect here. Um, and this is in particular um, um, difficult when it comes to changing organizations, when it comes to coming out with new kind of innovations, new kind of ideas, because people, as we'll see um, later on, uh, automatically resist change. So they don't want to change. Um, and that is an issue that is also uh, been tackled um, as uh, in the framework of leadership. Controlling, of course, means you need to control whether the plans that you set up and the, the, and the actions that people undertake are, are accomplished as planned. So you do an, uh, a comparison of um, the to be and the as is status of the organization. And all this should lead to the achievement of the organization's stated purposes and objectives. So that was the first uh, approach to management. Um, there's not one approach, but different, different kind of approaches to management. And not, there's not one correct one, uh, but we'll quickly look at the others. Um, another uh, researcher, Henry Minzberg, he set up um, a completely different approach. He said, uh, yeah, of course, management is about the POLC, planning, organizing, leading, controlling. But in addition to that, management is also the fulfillment of certain kind of roles. So he calls it the roles approach. Um, a manager has to have different kind of roles. So interpersonal ones. So as a leader, as a figurehead, who's showing where the organization should go in disruptive times, in times of big, big change. What I always um, um, use in this kind of context, and I was also using that during my presentation with Professor Kotler, um, this acronym, we are living in a VUCA world, VUCA world. Um, and this term, this acronym has been coined by um, US military, and it stands for volatility. Volatility, so everything is more volatile than ever before. So look at the stock market right now. So it's very volatile, it's changing very quickly. Then um, uncertainty, the U stands for uncertainty. And the C is for complexity. So everything is more complex. It's not only more uncertain, but it's also complex. And there is not one single meaning, but we have uh, ambiguity. So that is uh, the world we are living in, in, in particular right now. Um, then a manager also has to pursue an informational role. So as a monitor, as a spokesperson, he has to act. And of course, there are also decisional roles. So he has to uh, make organization-wide decisions in the end. Yeah. He has to also allocate resources so to get the right people on the right job in the in the right amount of um, of, of people right um he has to negotiate with uh, suppliers with other organizations for example when um an, an enterprise tries to acquire another one in the framework of mergers and acquisitions and of course he has to um function as a disturbance handler so if there is any kind of conflict yes to look at that and here are different kind of roles that uh, Minspec anticipated. So interpersonal roles, we talked about that. 
informational roles and decisional uh, roles here. That is a completely different kind of um, approach to management or to a manager and what a manager needs to encompass. What I also like is um, third one. Um, you can, there was one question, I think, right now coming up from somebody. Yes, um, Habib is asking, I wanted to ask a question that function of manage, manager is stuffing or no? Yes, of course, um, stuffing is also um, uh, a task of management of a manager. He needs to decide, like I said, um, resource allocation is also resources means, of course, also human resources. He needs to decide how many people do we need in which kind of department. Right. So that is um, that is, of course, a very, very important task. So like we said at the beginning and when I was trying to give you an overview about the tasks of management and about the contents of the lecture, you saw that uh, management is super, super complex because human resource management, like I said, marketing management, um, financial management. All this is all this is management. Um, yes, uh, another uh, approach I, I really like uh, personally is um, the skills approach, um, which has been coined by Katz or Robert Katz. And Katz said that um, there are different kinds of skills a manager needs to encompass. On the one hand side, he or she needs to have technical knowledge. So that is um, the knowledge and proficiency in a specialized field. So if you're studying, for example, mechanical engineering, this is the technical area of expertise where you are an expert. Um, but there are also human skills, the ability to work well with other people, both individually and in a group, right? So that is all this leadership thing which is coming in here. Remember the um, pragmatic definition at the beginning, a manager is somebody who works with and through other people in order to achieve company's objectives. So you need to work with people to coordinate their work activities, to lead them, to motivate them, to guide them. Uh, and these are all the human aspects here, the human skills here. Um, that a manager needs to encompass as well. The last one is conceptual skills. What is conceptual thinking? Conceptual thinking is the ability to think about abstract and complex situations. This is what the Americans call um, thinking outside of the box. What does it mean? It means um, to look at a bigger picture, to look at a wider picture. To, uh, to step away from the wall, let's assume you're standing 10 centimeters next to a wall and to step back one feet, two feet, and to have a wider view. So you don't necessarily see all the details, but you, you, you have a more widened view. And that is very, very, very important in management um, in general, in order to be able to also change the organizations. Um, I'll give you one example. So um, when <clears throat> uh, an industry, for example, as the airline industry, Lufthansa, British Airways, Swiss Airlines, um, usually what they, what, they, what they do, if they uh, think about their competitors, they would say, oh, my competitor is Lufthansa would say, my competitor is Singapore Airlines, my competitor is British Airways, my competitor is whatever kind of airline. But um, a conceptual perspective means that you widen your view here and also uh, take into consideration that competitors are also train services or car rental companies or, um, I don't know, um, Flixbus, for example. Um, they are doing a very, very good job in, in um, expanding, the, uh, expanding the business. So that is very important. You, you need this conceptual thinking about complex situations. Look at the wider picture. Um, otherwise, you don't see com competition coming and then you're exposed to what we call this disruption. Um, you need to see the organization as a whole. 
um, and you need to understand the relationships among different kinds of subunits. So how it all fits together, right? So how the organization fits into its broader environment. Not only look at your organization, but also look at a different kind of interest groups. We call that stakeholders, different kind of stakeholders, different kind of influences. Which skills do you need at different management levels? So at the top, you need more this conceptual thinking. Why do you need more conceptual thinking at the top than you need at the bottom of the organization? Because simply um, the top management is responsible for making organization-wide decisions, right? And therefore more conceptual thinking is needed at the top of the organization. Uh, you may argue about the other ones. Um, so I would even say that um, the higher you move up, uh, so human skills are, you see, are as important at each kind of level. Probably you may argue that here is a little bit um, more that needs to be added here. But um, the most important thing is also, apart from the conceptual things and that human stay as important uh, at every level of the organization, um, that technical skills are becoming less important the higher you move up in the um, in the hierarchy. Why is that? If you are um, graduating um, from university and you start your job as usually as lower level manager, so with no people you're supervising, right? Um, your technical uh, skills are paramount. They are very, very important because um, you're working in, uh, in one line of business, we call that, and um, you simply have to deal with um, very, very specific subject and area of expertise oriented topics and tasks. But the higher you move up, for example, um, if you become a middle manager and you supervise many people with different kinds of tasks, the less important um, the technical skills are. Um, one example, um, the marketing head um, of Shell in Germany, he studied physics. So he didn't study uh, management or business administration. He studied physics, uh, but he was very, very good in leading people. So he had very, very good conceptual thinking and of, um, and he was also very good uh, when it comes to um, human skills. So in the end, um, the higher you move up in the organization, the less important technical skills become and the more important um, non-technical skills become. So um, like communication, presentation skills and negotiation skills. So all what we, we, what, what we sum up usually um, under the term soft skills. It's very difficult uh, to type here with a mouse, but I tried to do that. Soft skills, they are becoming more and more important at the top of the organization. Okay, um, so I think we are, um, we are going to end it here and I'm, um, because we are close to one hour and uh, they told me that um, I shouldn't have too long videos, otherwise <laughs> um, they will need too much storage. Um, uh, and will be difficulty for the university or difficult for the university to upload them. So I would like to spend the last couple of minutes to answer some kind of questions, which may be um, important or coming up here. Um, oh, there are some interesting questions here. Um, one from a lady, Sandra is asking, do you think that we need more female managers? Sandra, I absolutely think we need more female managers. We need, in particular, we need more uh, female and more women um, management at the top of the organizations. Not only in Germany, but uh, that is a, a worldwide issue. Uh, why do I think that uh, that this is the case? Because um, if you look at the uh, DAX companies, so the biggest uh, companies in Germany, they're having too few women in in management, and women have. A, um, of course, that is a bit generalizing, and of course, um, I shouldn't do that. But um, women usually have a different kind of approach to management. So they're, they're, um, they're stronger usually when it comes to soft skills, when it comes to communication, when it comes to 
uh, sometimes when it comes to leadership, uh, certain kind of leadership questions, uh, being a just turbulence handler, for example. So I, I'm utterly convinced that we need more women in management. I hope uh, this answered, answered your question. And there is a question from Salem by conceptual. Do you mean that out of the box and why are you thinking? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean that Salem. So um, this out of the box thinking, um, this is an expression. I, I'm always getting that from my American friends here, being able to, uh, to think ahead, to think not only to look at the details, but to, um, to have a wider picture, a wider view. Um, and there's one more question. Is there um, a final exam or just the two assignments? Uh, Johanna is asking that. Um, no, there's no final examination. There's no written examination. We will have um, the, the live sessions. And in parallel to that, um, you, ha you have only the two assignments you need to do uh, within your group. Um, in the learning room, so in the Moodle, after you're enrolled with the, um, with the code uh, in the Moodle, um, you're going to find a template, an Excel template, um, so, and uh, also instructions how to fill it out. And you need to, um, in three, four weeks, need to tell me what is your group and which company did you choose, for example, for the SWOT analysis. Of course, we are going to discuss how to do a SWOT analysis. Um, that, uh, that is, of course, what we are going to do, to do together. So don't worry at all. We'll get it done somehow. And I think, honestly, that um, we are going to have a couple of more weeks uh, in this kind of situation. So I do my very, very best um, to uh, give you a, the, the best possible um, option to learn something about management and to get some, some input from my, from my kind of experience. Um, there's another question from uh, Martin. Can you please again talk just one minute about the semester task as I missed that because of the direct link thing? Ah, of course. Um, yeah. Quickly, I'm going back to that. Um, so for the students at the Technical University and also all the instructions are online. Don't worry about that. Um, you're going to have you have two tasks. One is again, first, you need to form a group of five to six people, can also be seven people, but not more than seven people. And then you need to select a company, which company you select uh, is, is, is up to you. Um, just let me know if you send me your group with your, uh, with your immatriculation number, with your names. Uh, which uh, company is selected, and then you need to do uh, a SWOT analysis for this self-elected company. And the SWOT analysis needs to be approximately 10 pages, can be 15 pages, can be 13, can be 12, so um, something around like that. And then the second uh, assignment would be also in the group to do a case study. Uh, and this case study is about a specific company and there are being questions uh, on this company and you need to answer um, uh, give an answer, provide an answer to these kind of, um, to these kind of questions. Okay. Um, yeah, you've, uh, you've made a case study on, on Elon Musk and also on Amazon. Can I send it to you? Oh, I'd love to have that. Um, Habib, that's, uh, that's fine. Great. Yeah, of course you're free to, to do uh, a SWOT analysis on Tesla motors. That's not, that's not a problem. Another question here coming from uh, Sandra. Um, if we look at the two, the Myers-Briggs personality test, would you say this uh, you call out of the box thinking goes with the second letter intuition? Yeah, partially. Uh, I would I would say that. And actually, uh, we are going to talk a little bit about the Myers-Briggs type personality test uh, when we talk about uh, communication, and also in my other lecture, which is called successful negotiation and communication. Because uh, different kind of uh, personalities, of course, have different kind of uh, virtues, different kind of skills, sui generis, out of their personality. So that is closely related to that. Thanks for the question. Yes, it's a port, uh, portfolio uh, examination being comprised of these two assignments. Um, Mr. von Bunker asked that kind of question. 
Okay, cool. Uh, any more questions? I'm uh, happy to answer some more questions. Otherwise, um, we will stop here. Um, like I said, I'm quickly showing again the um, internet page here of the course, this one, and the, uh, the code you need to, uh, to subscribe. Any more questions? Otherwise, we can also um, stay in here. Um, I stay in the line, but I end the um, the recording currently uh, in order not to make it to make it that big. So I quickly stop the uh, the recording. Thanks very much, first of all, for uh, for being with me. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. Um, although it's not the same as a physical lecture, but I tried my very, very best to give you the best uh, experience uh, whatsoever. And um, I wish you all the very best. Stay healthy um, in these yeah, disruptive, uncertain times. All the very best. And I look forward to seeing you again. I will communicate uh, via my Facebook and social media profiles and also via the university page here. If you enrolled in the course, uh, it is very easy to write one email and to get in contact with you um, very, very quickly. Um, so thanks very much. All the best. Bye-bye.